SEC Network night game, 7.30 p.m. Eastern Time. LSU, the Tigers head to Kentucky, and the Wildcats are a three-point favorite at home. Total of 50.5. LSU 5-1 and one against the spread, their last six as a road underdog. LSU, their last visit to Big Blue Nation was that crazy three-overtime loss in 2007, which happened to be the same year that LSU won the national title. Kentucky, 9-1 and one straight up, 7-3 and three against the spread, their last 10 as a home favorite. I Man, I wanted to roll with LSU because it felt like a good spot to do it, and the more that I have paid attention to the numbers and everything else, brother, they don't even try to run the football, and now you've got injury issues with uh, Keishon Butte. And you got all kind of stuff. Like, he's who they lean on. And it, it, it's not whether he'll play or not. I think he will play. I just don't think he'll be at 100%. I think Kentucky is going to run the football up and down the field on LSU's defense. And in close games, Mark Stoops has a history of being able to pull out those one-score games. I'm going to take Kentucky minus the three. I, I, think, I think right now they are the better football team, and LSU is reeling a little bit. I don't even know why I ask you about these. I know you're going to take your Tigers, uh, but I would like to get your yep. opinion on the game. <laughs> so, my opinion is that you cannot run the forward. They don't try because they can't do it, Gary. I don't try to fly off buildings because I can't. I'll fall and I'll die. All right? But, hey, let, me, let me interrupt you real quick. Let me, let me interrupt you because, uh, so on, you know, we do our reaction show on Sunday, right? Mm-hmm. And I went back and I, I had watched a little bit and I had been listening. And if you just look at the stats – for the LSU Auburn game, they had 24 rushes for like 29 yards. LSU did. But if you go back and look at actual called runs, like designed runs in the game, yeah. not not scrambles, not uh just you know ball bouncing around whatever, like sacks, etc., they only had like 13 runs in the game. 13. And yeah. that's with a 9-point lead in the fourth quarter. Because they can't run the football, Gary. I know. So they don't. They, got they be- don't. They just don't. It's not possible. It's it's insane. They just don't do it. If if they need if they need an inch, if they're a goal line offense and they need an inch, they can't get that inch. They just can't. They just, they just can't do it. So they're just not very good at that. All right. Defense. I, I, I think here's the thing. I do think this team can play some defense against Kentucky because if you, they have athletes, all right, and, and they struggle when they don't really know what you're doing, they can either kind of sell out to stop the run and do a good job at that, and then anybody in the world is open, and or they can back everybody up, play coverage pretty good, but then everybody can run on them. Everything underneath is wide open. The problem is, is Kentucky can't do that. Kentucky's just going to run the football. And so you have two one-dimensional football teams playing against one another, okay? One team is far better than the other right now, which is Kentucky, and they're at home. But I think the Tigers can keep this thing interesting. I think they can hang around. And and I do think that Keishon Butte is fine. I think he's going to play, and I think he's going to – he doesn't need to be 100%. Even at, at 70%, he's still a hell of a lot better than anybody on Kentucky. And I know they got one of the best running backs in the world. It doesn't matter. He don't have speed like Keishon. And if that guy shakes loose – they could, they could go three and out 19 times in a row. If he shakes loose the 20th, it's seven. That's it. Yeah, no, I can I can get with that. So college football nerds who you talked about earlier as far as the Twitter goes, yeah. they actually do a really good job of breaking down games and discussing you know team talent, different schemes, all that kind of stuff. They said about this game, uh, in terms of the college team talent, LSU is number five and Kentucky is number 31. But the question is, how is that reflected in starters? LSU starts two top 35 players and four other top 200 players. Kentucky starts two top 200 players. So because guys ranked 200 plus are a crapshoot, the talent gap actually isn't that huge. And it said for comparison's sake, uh, because people have asked, it says the gap between LSU starters and Bama starters is the Grand Canyon. It says Alabama starts four top 35 players and 15 other top 200s. It says so Alabama starting 19 top 200 players and LSU is starting six. So LSU, Kentucky is actually closer as far as talent than you would assume. Now, that, that could start a whole other conversation as to why in the world do you have so many talented guys sitting on the bench. But, you know, we, we understand development. We know all about that. This is, I think you're right, this is going to be kind of a coin-flippy game, and, and we'll see what happens because Kentucky 
has this season been known to turn the football over? So they didn't do it against Florida. Will they do it against LSU? And can LSU capitalize? So you're taking LSU plus three. I'm taking Kentucky minus three. Thanks for listening to the Winning Cures Everything podcast. The website is winningcureseverything.com. And if you want to connect with us, we're on Twitter at GaryWCE, at Chris B. Giannini, at Winning Cures. Or you can email us, Gary at winningcureseverything.com or Chris at winningcureseverything.com. Subscribe everywhere you need to subscribe. And we'll see you soon.